Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and another year has just passed, so in this video let's check out a quick summary of the best videos from 2021. Tons of interesting unique videos this year, in total 152 videos, that's quite a lot. I try to cover tons of topics, so there's lots of variety. Tons of tutorials, lots of showcase videos, complete games, top new games and assets, asset reviews and how it's made videos. Most of these are my own videos since that's what I'm most familiar with, but stick around to the end where I will also highlight some other great tutorials and great channels from other creators that you should follow. I made a page on the website where you can find links to all of these videos, all of them nicely grouped into categories so you can watch them later. And last year I also made a page and a video just like this one, so if you want to get a quick overview of what I made in 2020 then check that out. Alright, so let's look at some of these highlights. Going back through all of these to make this video was quite the journey. Sometimes it feels like one year is such a short amount of time, but looking at this list I can't believe how so many of these were done this year. It really feels like a lifetime ago. So the first tutorial of the year was a tutorial on machine learning vision using ML agents. Machine learning is a fascinating topic and something that will probably get more and more use cases in the future. Vision is a really cool use case. The machine literally learns to see and take action based on what it sees. I also used machine learning to solve a match 3 game. So that one is an example of how you can teach an AI to play your game and then you can use it to become much more efficient during testing. So it's been one year since I last touched machine learning, but I definitely want to do some more this year. Then in February, I had my very first truly viral video. It was the misleading ads game. Chances are lots of you found the channel because of that video. It's got almost 700,000 views, whereas my regular videos at the time got just around 5,000. The concept is that there's tons of ads that show a really interesting puzzle fluid game, but when you click on it, the final game is really just a boring match 3. So I decided to simply turn that concept into a real game. This was a really fun video and fun game to make. It involved learning how to make fluids in Unity, which I also made a dedicated tutorial on. The final game came out pretty nice. It does play exactly like the game in those misleading ads. Another really cool video and game this year was more recently the Squid Game. I was watching the show just like everyone else and decided to make a game about it. But there were already many people that recreated it exactly, so I thought why not to add a nice twist where instead of playing as the player, you play as the guard. I think that's a nice idea and the final game came out pretty fun. It's got lots of effects and some very satisfying ragdolls so it looks and plays great. The video is a devlog of how I made it, which actually was pretty fast. This year I also made tons more things based on my super useful grid system. This series of videos continues to be an excellent example on why you should write good clean code. First one was on making a grid building system, perfect for any kind of city builder game. Very easy to add some more building types, rotate them and place them anywhere in the world. This one was pretty easy to make thanks to the very well built grid class that was first made all the way back in 2019. Then I also took that to the next level and made a house building system. It involves placing the ground pieces, just like the grid building system, and then just attaching some walls and multiple levels. It's a real nice system and a real nice demo. Then around that time, I was also playing Valheim, so I took that house building system and made it work in third person. It's really great to walk around the world with a character, just look around and build a really nice house. Another really awesome use case for the grid system was making the Tetris inventory system. I really like making this one. It was based on my memories of playing commandos as a kid. You have items and each item has a specific shape. You can rotate and place that shape, that item in your inventory anywhere you want. It's a nice system that adds an extra layer of interesting decisions when interacting with an inventory. And I also finally decided to take my grid system and make a mini game in one of my favorite genres, making a factory automation game. It came out really well. You have various buildings, various items and recipes. Use grabbers to grab some items, conveyor belts to move them around, and craft more and more complex items. It's a pretty nice minigame and I think it also looks really nice. What inspired me to make that minigame was at the time I was playing Dyson Sphere Program. It's a really awesome factory automation game with a huge scale. And since I was playing it, I also made a video on my game dev review series, going through the game and analyzing why it was so good. In that series, I also covered Valheim. It's an awesome game that was massively successful and you can definitely learn a lot from it. I covered a bunch of game design lessons that you can learn from the game. And the first game dev review video I did was on Falconeer. It's a pretty fun indie game with some pretty interesting mechanics. Another video series that I also started this year was the How It's Made videos. This is where I play some game, find an interesting mechanic and then recreate that mechanic in Unity. Started off with remaking the soil moisture system from the game Endzone Aurora Part. 
Basically, a bunch of clouds are spawned, then they rain, and the rain wets the soil beneath them, which could then be connected to some sort of farming system. Then I played Rover Mechanic Simulator and recreated the cleaning minigame. This one was very useful for me personally. I learned how you can actually paint a 3D model on a very specific place. In this case, just use it with the mouse position in order to clean a dirt texture. Then I picked up Outer Wilds on Game Pass and found the scope probe to be an interesting mechanic that is actually pretty easy to recreate. It's mostly just a projectile with a camera attached to it. It's simple and works great. And finally, I played some Verdun and this time recreated three mechanics from it. First, the artillery, how you can look at a point in the world and spawn some explosions on that exact point. Then the gas system, which involves learning about local post-processing volumes and some basic logic. And finally, the arrow system, where you can click and draw on the minimap, which could then be used for giving orders to your teammates. Speaking of that, let's go through some of the tutorials, one of them being a dedicated tutorial on that drawing system. It's how you can draw anything directly inside of Unity. It's pretty simple, it really just involves learning how to dynamically create meshes. So as usual, this year I made tons of tutorials on various levels of complexity. Some really basic ones like how to get the mouse worm position, covering how to get it both in 2D and 3D. Also how to add glow in Unity. This one is pretty basic, but I see quite a lot of comments asking about it, so I made a dedicated video that I can now send to people. Then I made a video on how to get free characters and free animations. It's all about Mixamo. Most of you probably already know about it, but some people don't, and it's in a super useful website. I made a question dialogue. It's pretty essential to any game. I think I did use this one in literally every single one of my Steam games. Then I cover destruction in Unity, how to use ProBuilder to slice objects and trigger an explosion with physics. Also apply that same logic to a render texture, making a really nice screen explode effect. Speaking of render textures, I made a dedicated video about them. They are super useful. If you don't know about them, definitely go watch that video right now. I've used them in making so many effects. One of the more useful tutorials was the third person shooter tutorial. It's actually quite simple, just involves a basic character controller, identifying the mouse position and handling some basic logic. You can use this as a starting point for so many game ideas. To make the character aim perfectly, it involves using the animation rigging package. This one is a super useful package, it really helps you make your animations much more dynamic, super useful. Another Unity tool I covered was NavMesh. This is Unity's built-in pathfinding system, works quite well in many scenarios. And I also covered the new input system. It's a pretty long video, but it will teach you absolutely everything you need to know about this new system. And then two more general but extremely important tutorials. First on why you should not make everything public. If you want to write good clean code, then this one is a must watch. And another one very useful for beginners on the Unity versions and how they are categorized. Then I also did some fun tutorials, one on multiple ways of making a rifle scope zoom, one on saving a screenshot along with a save file, and at the time I was playing some Battlefield and decided to make a quick tutorial on some simple capture areas logic. And speaking of that, another genre of videos I experimented with was making some shorts, specifically making quick how it's made videos. These are under 60 seconds and they are pretty nice. Made one on the hookshot in Battlefield, how you could recreate it. Then as I was playing Hades, I also made a quick how it's made on the path climb effect, essentially making a sprite follow a preset path, and another one on the transition effect, pretty simple and looks great. Another short format I experimented with was making some quick tips, made some on magic numbers, unity logs, how to keep your project clean, debug lines, frame rate testing, and many more. If you haven't seen any of these shorts videos, I would suggest you go watch them right now. You can really watch the whole playlist and go through all of the videos in under 10 minutes. You might learn something very useful in a very short amount of time. There were also some really interesting miscellaneous videos. This year Unreal 5 was unveiled, which looks great, so I made a video with my thoughts as a Unity developer. Earlier in the year, I made a video on 5 devlogs to watch during this year. One of those is now released and the others are still in development. It's pretty fun to see how far they've come. Another interesting one was on why I don't do game jams. You might have noticed that I rarely participate in game jams, and in that video I cover my reasons and some pros and cons of game jams. And one that took me ages to make, and quite different from the usual, was my blockchain explained video. I was researching blockchain technology for many months, learning how it works, and in the end I made a nice demo going through it step by step on exactly how the technology works. Starting off with a simple block, then adding some data to that block, hashing the block for security, adding a connection to the previous block, and so on. 
It was great to research this topic. If you have any interest in the technology, give it a watch so you are more familiar with how it actually works, which then helps you separate all of the hype you hear from the reality. This year, I also started my series covering the top new games made with Unity every month. This one is a great series for me to keep up to date with what's coming out and see what is finding success. Learning about new releases and what is popular is definitely a must if you want to be a successful indie game developer, so I will definitely continue doing this series once a month in 22. Another top 10 series was my new asset series. I go through the entire store every month, then I pick 10 free assets, 10 systems and tools, and 20 visual assets. Once again, I do these videos so I myself keep up to date with what's coming out. There's constantly lots of awesome stuff coming out on the store, and some of these assets can really help you on your game dev journey. This year I also launched my very first assets. First a free asset, the key door system. It's very simple, does exactly what it's meant to do. You create some keys, pick them up and use them to open doors. And I also made the mouse cursor system pro. This one is all about letting you easily create custom cursors. If you want your games to send out then adding a custom animated cursor is a great way to do it. And included in the asset is also a really in-depth walkthrough tutorial on how exactly this system works. I only managed to create these two, but this year I definitely want to do some more, both free and paid. Speaking of assets, another series that I started was my asset review series. There's tons of awesome stuff on the store, but not much info on which ones are worth it and how exactly they work. So in those videos I go through some assets, check out how they work, what the documentation and demos look like, and then I include a quick getting started tutorial. I've made a bunch of them on some very interesting assets. First one on the A-Star Pathfinding project. I've been using this asset since my very first Steam game, so I picked this asset all the way back in 2013. It's been really useful. Then the Odin Inspector. This one is an excellent tool for making tools. If you use it correctly, it has the power to greatly increase your productivity. After that was Curved Worlds. This one is a fun effect that will instantly make your game stand out. Then the All-in-One Sprite Shader. This one is awesome for anything in 2D. Makes it super easy to add tons of effects and really take your game's polish to the next level. Then I explored Rayfire, one of the most impressive assets that I've seen. It's all about destruction, you can break your objects into millions of pieces, looks awesome and is really performant. After that was the Quantum Console, extremely useful in so many scenarios. You can easily create a console and set up commands to trigger any functions in your code. I'm definitely going to be using this one in any future games I make. And then I covered Feel. This one is an asset all about making your game feel awesome. You can easily add polish with tons and tons of effects. So all of those are great to explore and by watching the reviews you can see how they work and if they are worth the asking price. I will definitely continue making more of these in the future. There's tons of really awesome assets that can really help you out. And of course this year I also worked on my courses. Right in the beginning of the year was my update to my visual scripting course. I add the third game to it, a 3D first person shooter. So with that, the visual scripting course is really complete. It starts off with a basic 2D platformer to learn the basics, then a 2D RPG with tons of features, and finally a 3D first person shooter. Every single one of those games is made entirely with visual scripting, there's no code anywhere in those games. Then in the middle of the year, I launched my Ultimate Unity Overview course. This one is all about covering all of the tools and features of the engine, there's tons of them. Each lecture covers a different one, so there's one lecture on NevMesh, one on ProBuilder, another one on Animation Rigging, one on Ragdolls and so on. There's tons and tons of tools and features, so the goal with this one right from the beginning was to make something that I could then expand and update over time. At launch it had 30 lectures and since then there's been two free updates adding 20 more lectures explaining more and more tools and features. There's still tons more, so if you already have the course, definitely look forward to several more free updates coming this year. Okay, so those were my highlights from 2021, but there's tons of awesome creators making lots of awesome Unity content on YouTube. This year, Mark Brown from Game Maker's Toolkit started working on his game. Chances are most of you are familiar with the channel, but if not, definitely go watch it. It's an awesome channel with excellently produced videos where you can learn a ton about game design. Then Flow Studio, which is the channel for the game Lens Allen that I also covered in the devlogs video that came out this year. Their devlogs are great, and they also made a mini documentary on the process of building Lens Allen over several years. Very interesting. One channel that has been doing excellent in-depth tutorials is High Heart Game Dev. The videos are extremely well produced and really diving deep into each topic. And there's tons more like Jason Wyman, Blackthorn Prod, Infallible Code, Taro Dev, and many more. 
If you're looking for more game dev content and tutorials, definitely check them out. Alright, so that was 2021. Looking back, it's really quite insane how many topics I managed to cover and how many things I built. Some of these feel like they were made a lifetime ago, but it was really just one year. It really goes to show how if you do something every single day, even if it doesn't seem like much, it definitely adds up over the course of a year. So take that advice and apply it to your own games, do something no matter how tiny every single day and in one year you will have made a ton of progress. And I genuinely hope you found the videos useful and that they helped you learn on your game development journey. This channel really only exists because you watch the videos, so sincerely thank you for watching them. I hope to keep making many many more interesting videos to inspire and teach you for many years to come. And speaking of this community, I asked you which thumbnail was best for this video and got tons of responses, that was awesome. And especially thank you to Shreyas who had the excellent idea of combining the simplicity of the first one with the extra detail of the second one on the corner of the thumbnail. So thanks again for watching and stay tuned for an awesome 2022.